we've teased this quite a bit. Um, some of you might already know about this, some of you may not, um, but we had an incident um, back, oh, I can't believe that was already February. Um, back in February um, of a um, cat that got out to San Nicolas Island. Um, and as Martin mentioned um, on uh, when he was giving the update earlier, um, we are pretty certain that it came from one of the barges um, that are leaving from Long Beach for these um, for this big uh, construction project that's going out there um, that's still ongoing. So um, I pulled out this timeline. Um, I'll walk you guys through it, um, show you a quick map of kind of how things happen. And then um, I know Jason Fraker is on the line and he's been um, a part of that um, effort. So um, I'll, I'll open the floor to him to see if he has anything to add to it. Um, so um, on February 12th, the barge arrived on SNI. Um, before I actually keep going, I want to say I um, was actually able to inspect that barge down in Long Beach, but um, I inspected it on, uh, let me, let's say I inspected it on like a Thursday and it was supposed to go out that same day and because of weather it ended up getting pushed until the following week. So there was um, a gap of time between when the inspection actually happened and when the barge um, left for Nick. So. Um, we suspect that the cat um, uh, stowed away during that time. So the barge arrived um, to the island on the 12th. Um, the first cat sighting by um, an island um, staffer um, was on the 13th, um, but they didn't actually um, report that to Bill until the 19th. Um, the person actually took a video but it was like a total um, like Bigfoot video where, <laughs> you know, everybody was looking at it and some people thought, oh, that's for sure a fox. Other people saw it and said, that's for sure a cat. There were some uh, still, you know, uh, some shots that it looked like one animal and other that looked like the other. It was a total a debate back and forth. Um, but to be safe, Bill um, set out some cameras out in the yard where Soltech was staging uh, their material. So Soltech is the contractor um, that's that's uh, that's working on the project. So he set up the camera, baited. Um, on the 20th, there was a second sighting. Um, on the 26th, uh, so a few more cameras were put out. The cameras were checked. Um, another uh, witness report um, that they said that they saw it by another building um, and they let Bill know and he put out a trap and caught it that next day. So, um, and he um, sent the, the, the cat out for necropsy. So uh, here's a photo of the cat. Um, this, um, I'll show you guys kind of the map of how this happened. So this is where the barge comes in and it, um, had to drive all the way around here to where the uh, to where the staging area was. Um, you can see the cameras that that were put out, uh, the camera array that Bill put out, and this is ultimately where, um, uh, yeah, where it was captured. Um, but uh, you know, one big thing that we want to highlight, both from this instance and from the um, rat. A situation at Magoo is the importance of having um, people on the ground giving the reports, right? I mean, we had cameras out, didn't capture it. We have a camera by the airfield, which is probably no more than like 50 yards from where it was ultimately caught, that um, didn't ever see the cat on, on the images, um, even on the cameras that they'll put out. The cat was never uh, seen on there. Um, so it really goes to show the importance of educating, um, you know, island staff and using them as, you know, one of our biggest resources. Um, it, you know, the Buddy Mad and Madiam have plenty of stories of um, their getting, uh, witness reports um, for sightings and that being the way that they find out that there's um, an invasive out on the island. So um, that's definitely the biggest point that I want to hammer home is the importance of um, education 
um, interacting with people both in person and also having, you know, information put out, whether it be signage or whatever it may be, um, so that, you know, they feel um, empowered and comfortable to come to us when there is uh, something that they, they're not sure about, um, you know, whether it's um, whether it belongs out there or not. Um, so, um, Jason, uh, do you have anything that you want to add to this? This is Roland. Oh. Jason doesn't have any. Uh, oh, right. He's sorry. Okay. Um, so this is, yeah, this is Martin here. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, you know, we don't really have, you know, the smoking gun for this, but what we suspect is we did, as Julie mentioned, we did do a survey of all the cargo, but basically the cargo sat there for a couple of days before, um, it actually left the island due to sea surface conditions that delayed the barge. So one thing we have, have changed since then and something that, um, a little more effort is we've started to do two suits. Really good. We have to do one when the car when the cargo arrives, so that way we can check for you know any biosecurity threats, and that way they have time to resolve it. And we also do one the morning of because basically we think maybe that we expected it and all was fine, and the cat hopped in the cargo the night before loading. So now we're trying. We're just having more effort, and Bernadero's going out there you know, the day before to check the cargo and then the morning of just to make sure nothing's stowed away in the cargo overnight. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a more increased effort and cost, you know, one to, you know, because we didn't want to just do one in the morning and then there's a lot of cargo that's supposed to be loaded and they don't have any time to resolve it so it wouldn't go out in the cargo. So it's just definitely a lot more effort to do two inspections just to make sure we get time to clean up the cargo and then we find any last minute stowaways that may have, um, you know, hopped aboard the, the night before. So, um, you know, that's kind of how we're addressing that to make sure it doesn't happen again if that's kind of maybe how the cat got out there in the first place. Just it was, you know, hopped in there the night before departure. So just one of the challenges, too, with obviously with the barges, they, uh, you know, they keep getting delayed and delayed. So, you know, you'd go out there in the morning and realize, you know, it's not going out till the next day. So we'd have to go out again and check the next morning. So definitely challenging, but that's really the only way to pick up those last minute stowaways. Um, but we've done a lot of pushing them to do a lot more control of uh, pest control and pest management on that site. So hopefully it won't be as likely as it was in the past that something would hop aboard last minute. That's it. Hey, Huli, this is Annie. I just wanted to add a little bit to, um, I was sort of in the mix a little bit with Bill and Martin and the response just because of my involvement with the eradication project 10 years ago. Um, and I wanted to just give a shout out to Island Conservation as well, who, um, you know, was our partner on the eradication project. And they really helped provide some technical assistance to the Navy uh, in, in sort of looking at the videos and determining, you know, next steps. And um, I... I think that was really um, important because, as Huli mentioned, that video was very uncertain. And, um, you know, I see was like, wow, OK, you guys, you know, this needs to be taken seriously. This this is a potential here. So I think it was really important to also, um, you know, bring in some folks um, with that specific expertise and because they were so familiar with foxes, um, you know, just the similarities between foxes and cats out on the island. It's um, it's tricky. So uh, just wanted to acknowledge that their their participation and, and just willingness to kind of jump in and, and help out on this response. Yeah, thanks, Annie. Hey, Huli, this is Nick. Just uh, two questions. Um, so just uh, first question, not recording any cats on the cameras that were deployed, um, aside, aside from the first uh, you know what what triggered the in, the whole incident were the cameras baited were there any uh, any baiting going on at all or any kind of attractant used with the cameras or were they just placed in in locations expecting to interact with the cat yeah all the cameras were baited and nick uh just a quick clarification the first video was somebody actually on their cell phone um taking a video so it wasn't one of our like deployed cameras um that caught the cat it was just somebody that was Driving by, they saw it and they were like, what the heck is that? And then so they started recording, which was 
awesome because we had that um, had that evidence to look at. Um, but yeah, all of the cameras were baited. Okay, um, and then second, second and last question is, uh, you know, the slides and the maps that you're showing here and the dialogue that I'm hearing um, is an excellent uh, uh, review of what happened and especially to hear the comments of lessons learned and what that means for subsequent biosecurity. So clearly sharing with this stakeholder group is a, a really important um, uh, after action review, but I'm wondering if, if this is going to be written up at all and made publicly available for other stakeholders in bio, in the biosecurity world. Um, Martin, I'll let you answer that. I know that a report has been written, but I'm not sure um, what the um, limitations are with sharing that um, publicly. So, Martin? Yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason why. I mean, we just have to run through our public affairs office if we wanted to, uh, you know, release it more widely. However, that might be the best way to get out to the biosecurity world. But, but yeah, I don't think that should be a problem. We just have to, um, yeah, write something up, either um, just kind of formalize that report we do have and make it a little more, um, you know, available, ready to go out to uh, the scientific community. But, but yeah, that's something we could definitely look into for sure. Okay. That's great. that's great. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Um, any other thoughts on this before we move on? We've just got seven minutes left on our um, for the biosecurity part of this meeting. Okay. Well, I'm just going to power us through um, these last few slides. So we already saw the uh, the rat stuff. So thank you to Martin for um, giving us that overview early.